Okay, uh, great. Uh, first of all, uh, hi all, hi uh, Java community. Uh, today we gathered to listen about memory leaks. Uh, but first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Roman. Uh, I have been working at Software for three and a half years. Uh, I am a Billiton Senior Pro Software Engineer according to Software classification. Uh, I have some Oracle and uh, Google certificates, but it's not really interesting. Um, I believe we can switch to the first slide because you know some info about me and so on and so forth. Okay, and uh, the first slide contains a question. Uh, do we really have memory leaks in Java? Uh, and the answer is a uh, kind of easy one. Uh, no, <laughs> sense for attention by. <laughs> uh, but um, I'm kidding. and. That's why, uh, but I believe that you can receive such an answer from the uh, people that have lack of experience, for example, some tiny Yoda uh, that uh, knows how to write, for example, uh, hello force application that definitely contains no memory leaks. Um, okay, uh, but we have some more experienced uh, developer like Obi-Wan Kenobi and he's forcing Tiny Yoda to sync one more time and the real answer is yes. And here we see some uh, Captain Spock and he shows the answer at this question with his almost Y-shaped hand like Y means yes uh, and tells us that the force will help us with this problem uh, but he can definitely be wrong because we will use some other tools. Uh, okay, let's move forward. Uh, we need to know uh, our enemy and here we have some definition of memory leak and it tells us that memory leak is a situation when there are some objects present in heap uh, that are no longer used but the garbage collector is unable to remove them from memory. Uh, I will not stop on Java memory model. Uh, I hope that all of you know at least about garbage collector, stack memory and heap space uh, because it's really a huge topic to discuss and we will need to have Additionally, went to dive into travel memory model, and I believe a separate one for garbage collectors, uh, its strategies and evolution. Because in Java 10 or 11, I don't remember really, uh, we have an interface for creation of garbage collection, uh, garbage collectors, uh, and some additional implementations like uh, no no ops epsilon garbage collector and uh, that garbage collector that guarantees something like 10 milliseconds stops the world time for one terabyte heap. Do we have somebody here who is not familiar with the heap statement? Silence, I believe all of you know what is heap. Okay, uh, that's why we'll go forward. Um, here I have some picture of describing in theory how the memory leak look like. Um, there are two different types of objects in Java that uh, reside in heap memory, uh, reference objects and unreference objects. Uh, reference objects are those who have still active references within the application uh, and unreference objects uh, don't have any active references. Uh, the garbage collector uh, removes unreference objects peri uh, periodically, but it never collects the objects that are still being referenced. Uh, and this uh, our red zone right here and it is our memory leak problem. Um, this next picture is kind of a practical representation of memory leak. I believe that people who had some experience with profilers or defining memory leaks uh, are familiar with such sorts of pictures. Uh, the heap memory usage increases during the uh, application running because we're creating new objects. Uh, in some, at some point, garbage collector tried to remove them and he, you know, and has some success, uh, but we are creating more and more objects and in uh, result we have something like out of memory error. Uh, okay, and it is kind of funny feature uh, to remember because we can associate our uh, memory leak problem with Pacman that trying to eat all our RAM memory. Uh, okay, why it is bad? A memory leak uh, is bad because it blocks memory resources and degrades system performance over time. Uh, and if not dealt with uh, with this problem, the application will eventually ex exhaust its resources and finally terminating with a fatal memory error. 
in addition, I want to point your attention to the out of memory error, uh, but I don't want to stop here for a long time. That's why I put a link right here with full description of each type of uh, out of memory error. Uh, I just want you to remember that this error does not necessarily imply a memory leak. Uh, the problem can be as simple as configuration issue uh, and modifying the heap size uh, can uh, fix this problem. Um, you can modify the start heap size and the maximum heap size with such uh, virtual VM parameters and I put them in the frame uh, because I believe that all Java developers should remember them and know how to use them. Uh, okay, uh, what are the symptoms of uh, memory leaks? Uh, because as, as I have told earlier, out of memory error is not the main point of the memory leak, but it's still present here. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, the server performance degradation when the application is continuously running for a long time. This is kind of the first one. Uh, spontaneous and strange application crashes. Uh, kind of the second one. The application is occasionally running out of connection objects. The third one, high CPU utilization uh, due to increased garbage collector activity because a garbage collector trying to fight with this problem and that's why he uh, increase the CPU usage. And of course, out of memory error. Okay, <clears throat> what, uh, oh, it's kind of a second part of this presentation, uh, more practical part. Here we will discuss and point out the main types of memory leaks, some bad practices of writing code that can produce memory leaks, uh, and we'll find solution for each case to avoid this problem. Okay, and the first scenario is memory leak through static fields. Uh, as you know, um, in Java, static fields have a life that usually measures the entire lifetime uh, of the running application. Uh, of course, unless class loader becomes eligible for garbage collection, but it's kind of, I don't know, almost impossible um, case. Uh, I uh, prepared some small project uh, to describe what uh, caused the problem. And because of uh, kind of bad imagination uh, for samples, uh, if I, uh, I want to say sorry, <laughs> because if some high level business requirements will be incorrect, ambiguous or inexplicit, uh, sorry for that. Okay, uh, the program uh, is, contains only three classes like uh, static test, uh, it's kind of entry point, our favorite public static void main. Uh, we have some thread slip here, it's just to wait until I open visual VM, it's kind of just sort of delay, and uh, some infinite loop to continue uh, tracking our memory after the all code will be executed. Uh, and we have kind of archive uh, class that contains some collection of persons, and of course, and um, this archive class knows how to work with persons. It contains some useful methods, and as uh, the bad practice tells us, for a huge enterprise project, we should always leave to do comments for future improvements like this. Um, okay, and we also contain some person class like simple pojo, but without getters and setters, uh, never mind. Uh, okay, let's, uh, for uh, profiling, I will use Visual VM. It is right, uh, starting, uh, it's right here. Okay, uh, let's try to start our application. Uh, I want to point your attention to, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> here should be a static. Um, okay. We have static collection because we should emulate some problem. Uh, let's try to launch this application. Okay. Application is started. We can find it right here. Uh, waiting for opening. Uh, go to monitor tab. Okay, the CPU, uh, we will not need it. Uh, currently, we are waiting for that delay that I put right here. Um, 
currently we are creating, uh, we are populating the archive with person with init method. I will do like this. Okay, it seems that uh, all the logic of our application was done. We have some output, like I have found something, but I will not show it to you. It's kind of all the useful co uh, code was done. And currently we emulating some uh, hard work after this object is not needed anymore. Uh, let's try to perform garbage collection. Some delay because garbage collection is trying to do that. And what we will have, we will have almost nothing because all the static collection still lives in our memory and garbage collector cannot remove it due to that static reference. Okay, uh, let's uh, stop it for now and try to apply the fix. Just removing this static uh, keyword and I will relaunch the application. Uh, have some start. Uh, okay, go to monitor tab. This is not useful for us for now. Uh, seems a similar situation. Uh, we are populating the uh, archive class with uh, list of persons. Oh, it seems that all, all persons uh, were creating. Uh, let's try to perform some garbage, some garbage collection. And we can see that uh, all this uh, collection with that object was totally removed. Kind of uh, a, bet, uh, a better look for memory footprint. Okay, uh, let's make some conclusions. First of all, I will add uh, our charts uh, for you to remember. Uh, and let's declare some solutions. First of all, uh, the solution is kind of easy. You need to minimize the use of static variables. Uh, if you use singleton, because you know that for singleton, uh, you should use some uh, static field declaration, um, but you can uh, use a lazy loading pattern uh, to uh, reduce such situation like I have showed you. And of course, I will add some chart here for uh, just to remember in this case. Uh, okay, uh, let's move forward. Uh, I attach here uh, such funny uh, picture uh, just to remember this case uh, because I believe that it is the best illustration of how static reference works. Uh, it, it due to its uh, due to its pause with clashes, it makes objects uh, uncollectable for garbage collector. Okay, the next problem uh, belongs to equals and hash code. Uh, I mean to improper overridden methods. Uh, if we will improper override this method, it will cause it can cause us a lot of problems. I also have some uh, kind of sample. Uh, it contains only uh, some uh, entry point and some simple pointer class. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can you see the code? Or oh, I should uh, increase the size of font. It, it's fine. Oh, okay. Um, what we will do, we will try to uh, put the same object uh, kind of one million times and we will see what will happen. Okay, I will try to launch this code. Uh, Because um, here we have some set, and if, as you know, the set contains only unique objects. And here we will try to uh, put one million objects. Oh, I have a output here. It seems that my application is already done. Um, and due to the incorrect uh, equals and hash code, uh, we have something like almost 100 megabytes uh, of objects in our memory, and it shows that we. Uh, put kind of 1 million uh, objects in our set. And it is kind of bad because it should be only one because it's unique. Uh, how to fix it? Of course, kind of 
easy. We just need to create some equals and hash code message. Uh, just remember that here we have um, almost 100 megabytes. And if I will generate some equals and hash code, uh, the memory uh, footprint should be much smaller. Okay, I have some equals and hash code. Let's try to run this application. Mm, don't need this. Uh, equals and hash code test. Mm. Oh, it, it was even garbage collector because uh, I didn't use that uh, hash set and person here but you can see that uh, the memory footprint was something like oh i don't know 18 megabytes it means uh, that currently the set uh, is working correctly and we have only one unique object in our set okay let's make some small conclusion um, i will attach uh, some charts uh, just to remember and the solution is kind of easy uh, we should always override equals and hash code methods. Uh, we should follow the equals and hash code contracts. Um, if somebody uh, do not know what is uh, what is the contract between equals and hash code, I put here a link and you can read uh, about it because it contains some reflective, symmetric, transistive, uh, and consistent rules uh, just to determine equals and hash code uh, correct. Uh, but also you can use uh, some helpers like uh, your favorite IDE helper, like uh, I did a few minutes ago, or you can use Apache Commons with uh, its equals builder and hash code builder, or you can use Project Lombard uh, to generate these methods with uh, equals uh, and hash code annotation, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay, I will attach some chart here, just to remember this case, and uh, we will move forward uh the next one problem is connected to inner classes uh, this problem uh, happens in the case of non-static inner classes uh, or anonymous or also for anonymous classes um, for initialization these inner classes always require an instance of the enclosing class uh, every non-static inner class has by default an implicit reference to its uh, containing class uh, and if we use this inner class object in our application, then even after our container class object goes out of scope, it will not be garbage collector due to this reference. Um, because uh, this inner class uh, implicitly holds a reference to the outer class object. Um, okay, uh, this was the hardest case uh, for me to, um, uh, I believe for my image emanation, uh, because uh, as for me, I don't like to create some inner classes except uh, anonymously classes. Um, and I know that we can create inner class, we have four types of inner classes, like static classes, non-static classes, local classes, anonymous classes uh, in Java. Um, and we should create inner classes when we need some logical grouping uh, of uh, some classes and, um, for uh, increasing of encapsulation. Uh, but in the internet, uh, as a sample, you can find only some abstract inner and outer class. Uh, I tried to be more specific and tried uh, not to use some, uh, for example, JDK samples uh, like collection and iterator, because iterator is kind of inner class of collection. Uh, integer and integer cache. Uh, oh, integer cache, if someone doesn't know what integer cache stands for, please note it uh, somewhere. Uh, because it's kind of interesting thing and you can read it. You can find some useful information about it in the internet. Uh, okay, we have inner and outer classes. Um, almost all the same logic. The thread sleep, some trying to create some in the instance of uh, inner class. Um, uh, as I have told you, I try to be more specific and I create some sort of newspaper. It contains uh, an inner article class. It's non-static inner class. Uh, newspaper knows how to work uh, with articles and we do, almost do not need to use article outside the newspaper class. Article knows uh, contains some facts uh, and 
everything this class can do for now is just get some random fact. Uh, okay, uh, I will launch this uh, small program and we'll try to find it in my visual VM. Okay, I have it. Uh, open the monitor tab, waiting for our delay. Oh, something happened. We, uh, what is happening? We just need to create an article class, inner kind, of, but we can't create it uh, without a newspaper class. Uh, I tried to create, uh, to emulate uh, big objects because it, uh, it is easier to show you on the situation on big object. It means when you try to create article, it creates also newspaper and contains link for it. Uh, and kind of this is a big object and this object is kind of big. That's why we have something like uh, 600 megabytes in uh, how we use heat. Okay, let's uh, try to perform some garbage collection. And what we will see. Uh, we will see nothing. Kind of bad situation. The fix is uh, kind of easy. Uh, we just need to make this inner class static. Uh, of course, you can use uh, this purpose when you don't need uh, your inner class uh, to have some interaction with uh, private fields of outer class. Mm, let's like here. Okay, let's relaunch it. Uh, oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, monitor tab. Again, delay. Oh, it seems that we received some output from our uh, article class. It found to us uh, some random fact, and we can see that uh, memory footprint is really small. And we can also try to perform some garbage collection, and it will become even smaller. Okay, this is the case. Let's do some conclusions and add some charts. The first one chart, our problem with non-static inner class, and kind of the solution. Uh, if the inner class does not need access to the containing class members, consider turning it into a static class, because it will uh, cost much more, or hit much, uh, much less, uh, uh, heap usage. Uh, okay, let's move forward. Uh, the next uh, case uh, belongs to finalized methods. Um, use of finalizers is another source of potential memory leak issues. Um, whenever a class finalized method is overriding, uh, then objects of that class aren't instantly garbage collected. Instead, the garbage collector uh, uses them for finalization uh, that will be in some later point of time. Um, also, if uh, the code written in finalized method is not optimal, uh, I, um, I believe you have uh, some uh, errors in it or something like this. It can, it, uh, puts these objects in uh, queue for finalization and it will be there forever until you reach some out of memory error. Uh, I prepare some one more sample for this case. It's kind of here. Uh, also, everything is quite simple. We have some delay, we have some uh, collection of class with finalized method. Let's check if we, yeah, we do really have some already finalized method. Uh, and we are trying to create something like 100,000 of such uh, instances. Okay, uh, let's launch our sample. Okay. Go to monitor tab. This is not needed for us. 
okay, we have some output. Uh, currently, we have something like almost 100 megabytes of heap usage. Uh, it seems that all of our classes were created. Uh, let's try to perform some garbage collection. You can see that uh, in output, all the finalized method was called, but here we do not have some impact on heap usage. Kind of bad situation. Um, the fix is quite, uh, kind of simple as well, just we do not need to finalize method at all. If you need some finalization, I believe you can find some better strategy. If it is sprint, you can use some post contracts, uh, post cons, oh, have forgotten, post remove methods or something like this. I don't remember how they call. Uh, okay. Uh, Let's show you that the fix is working. Let's relaunch this application. Oh, sorry, we need to close this and to open this one. Uh, monitor tab. Okay, it seems that we have also objects uh, created uh, at this point of time, and let's try to perform some garbage collection. Kind of better situation. Yep. Okay, let's add some charts for this and uh, go to the uh, conclusions. The solution, as I have mentioned, is kind of easy avoid finalizer, or you can use Java 9 plus because finalized method in uh, Java 9 plus is deprecated and kind of our better situation, uh, just to remember. Uh, Let's move forward. Oh, oh okay. Uh, do you know this guy? <laughs> Does somebody know this guy? Uh, still silent. Okay, this uh, Joshua Bloch. Uh, it is the author of famous in Java community book, Effective Java. Uh, and he once uh, commented on thread lock usage that sloppy use of thread pools in combination with sloppy use of thread locals can cause unintended object retention. Uh, as can be noted in many places, but placing the blade on thread locals is unwarranted. Um, and he's kind of right as usual. Um, oh, uh, do you know what thread local is used for? Guys, don't be quiet. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, okay, great. Uh, this is why I will not stop on it. Um, just we'll stop on the problem. Uh, the problem is uh, when we try to use uh, thread locals in uh, modern solutions um, and all modern application uh, and solutions contains of pool of threads, not uh, they reuse threads because it's kind of expensive operation to create new thread. That's why they reuse them from the pool. And uh, due to this uh, stuff, all, all the thread locals uh, stay uh, connected to the thread forever. And they cannot be garbage collected. That's why the uh, heap memory will be increased uh, in time. And the solution is, uh, I don't have an example for this. Uh, I'm so sorry because I haven't enough time to prepare for this. Uh, but uh, I will switch to the solution to show you. Uh, the solution for this case is just every time you, uh, if you want to use some thread local uh, variable, you just need to clean up it. Uh, first of all, um, you can use the uh, finally block statement uh, as we use for some resources or whatever. Uh, but uh, I want to mention here that do not use uh, thread local set null to clear the value because it doesn't actually clear the value, but will instead uh, look up the map associated with the current thread and set the key value pair uh, as the current thread and uh, null respectively. Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's move forward. Another problem is unclosed resources. Kind of, I believe that all of you know about this problem and that all of you saw the possible memory leak warning in your favorite IDE. Uh, this one is from Eclipse, for example. Uh, there is a similar for IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, and I'm not sure if there is such a warning for NetBeans because I'm, I'm a bad Java developer and I have never used it. Um, and 
The problem is uh, that uh, whenever we make a new connection or open a stream, the JVM allocates memory for these resources. Uh, few examples like database, uh, connection uh, input streams, and some session objects. And if you forget to close these uh, resources, it can block our memory and uh, keep out of the reach of garbage collection go, uh, collector. Uh, this can even ha a case, uh, happen in the case uh, of an exception that uh, prevents the program execution from reaching the statement that handling the code to close the resource. I mean, oh, I will show. Uh, if uh, the except, uh, if you have some final block and the exception uh, will happen right here, uh, and here we have some close statement for our resource, uh, it will cause uh, also a memory leak problem because the close method was never called. Uh, okay, uh, how to prevent it? Kind of easy. Always use final block to close resources. Um, as I have mentioned, you should uh, correct define this finally block without some exceptions from in cases. Uh, you can use try with resources from Java 7 plus, or you can use some cleanup annotation from Project Lombard. Uh, okay, let's move forward. Uh, another problem is long uh, is connected to internal strings. It's kind of legacy memory leak, but I believe that it worth to know. Um, oh, I will tell a few words about internal method. Um, in Java, when we perform any operation using internal method, it returns a canonical representation for the string object. Uh, when the internal method is executed, then uh, it checks whether the string equals uh, to the string object in the pool or not. Uh, if it is available, then the string from the pool is returned. Otherwise, the string object is added to the pool and the reference to the string object is returned. Uh, it helps us to improve performance uh, because we can compare strings by uh, double equality sign uh, without using equals methods that compare strings by characters. Uh, the problem was is that before Java 7, and I believe in Java 6, the string pool uh, belongs to, if I'm not mistaken, to some perm gen, uh, and it uh, was not modifiable, mod, uh, modifiable, and uh, when we put a lot of strings uh, right here, uh, right there, um, we received some out of memory error. Currently, in Java 7, uh, Pergem uh, belongs to uh, heap space, and in Java 8, if I'm not mistaken, the Pergem was uh, transferred to Metaspace, or renamed, kind of, and uh, the Metaspace is uh, dynamically extendable, and in Java 7, we can uh, use some uh, VM options for setting, for increasing uh, Pergem uh, memory. Uh, Okay, let's move to some solution. The solution is kind of easy as well. Um, we just need to use Java 7 plus or Java 8 plus even. Uh, and um, just to point your attention to this problem, if you use Java 7, you should uh, use this uh, VM option to, and, and if you use a lot of strings and comparing strings, you should use this VM option uh, just not to receive some out of memory error. Uh, okay, next problem is uh, the is kind of obvious and it is kind of the smaller one because they have a uh, cause some smaller memory leak problems. Uh, as you can see in this uh, table, the uh, primitive types and uh, wrappers uh, have some different memory footprint. Wrappers are kind of bigger than primitive one. And it's kind of expected. This uh, all of this data was uh, generated uh, using Java object layout for 60-bit uh, Java hotspot. Uh, Java object layout is it is a tiny toolbox uh, to analyze in memory object layout schemes in JVM. Uh, it allows uh, to make an estimate of how much memory the object takes. Um, 
I have some sample of code for this case, but uh, I'm not sure that, oh, well, okay, I will show you. It's kind of simple, there is uh, nothing special as well. We have some uh, just uh, class for wrapper or just for primitive that, uh, we have some class that wraps the primitive uh, type and we, we are trying to create something like oh, 10 millions of objects. Uh, after that, I, I will not launch it because it's not really interesting because then after the, I have two charts here, uh, the first one and the second one, you can see just that uh, the memory footprint is different at something like, uh, I don't know, two, a little bit more than 200 megabytes. Oh, sorry. Uh, and the difference in this uh, code is just, uh, I switched to something like this. I used a wrapper, not a primitive type. And we have something like, 200 of megabytes difference. Uh, that's why I want to point attention that if you do not need some null value or please use primitive type or use primitive type even whenever you can. Uh, okay, what can we do more? Uh, kind of more ways to fight with memory leaks or detect them or something like this. The first one is, as you have seen, I used Visual VM for profiling. Uh, it's kind of useful tool. You can uh, create, oh, I will launch something. Okay, I will launch this one. Uh, it helps us to detect uh, memory in runtime. It helps us to do some heap dumps, thread dumps. Uh, heap dump, it is a snapshot of the memory uh, of the Java process at. Uh, certain point of time. For example, you can use heap dump right there, or you can do thread dump right there. You can see all the list of threads, uh, and so on and so forth. It's kind of very useful uh, thing when you need to profile something. Uh, of course, there are some um, other profilers like JProfiler, your kit, Visual VM. Also, uh, I believe that each cloud solution like uh, Google Cloud, uh, AWS, Azure have its own profilers and you can use them just to be sure what happened uh, with your heap in a certain point of time. Uh, also, we can use some VM options uh, like uh, for both GCs, it helps us to track what is happening inside garbage collector, or we can do some heap dump when out of memory error happen. We can uh, put all of this information to some log file and also believe that you can find some more useful VM options in the uh, Oracle specification or uh, the Oracle documentation. Uh, for example, uh, here is some example of uh, for both GC command usage. You can see here some um, data about how the garbage collector uh, was performing its garbage collection. Uh, for example, what is the total site of Yarn generation, before and after Yarn generation, when, the, uh, when you try to manually call the garbage collection, and some other useful stuff. Also, you can use, uh, you can help uh, garbage collector with using of some reference objects. There is a Java Lang ref package, uh, and it contains uh, some useful classes that help us to help garbage collector. Uh, the strong reference is familiar to all of you, I believe, because all of us use it in our daily life, uh, daily, daily coding, something like this. Uh, the soft reference, um, oh no, let's start from weak reference. Um, weak reference, uh, it's kind of, uh, I will rephrase, uh, a weekly reference object is cleared by the garbage collector when it's weekly reachable. Uh, weekly reachable means that uh, we don't ha do not have some strong or soft reference point to this uh, object. This kind of reference is used in the weak hash map. You can read about it. It's kind of 
funny uh, data structure. Also, I know that quick reference is uh, widely used in uh, listener and publisher problems like uh, lapsed listener problem, for example. Okay, another case is soft reference. Uh, it means that if the object is not marked for garbage collection, but J JVM needs memory, it will, it will be a garbage collector, but only in the case if JVM needs some memory. Uh, and the phantom reference is also, uh, oh, for soft reference, uh, you can implement, for example, if you, oh, I believe you can use it for, if you need some memory sensitive cache, it's kind of the best, uh, the best solution will be to use soft reference for this purpose. Uh, for phantom reference, I want to say that uh, uh, all, a phantom reference, uh, all objects that contains only a phantom reference, uh, we can't refer to them using their API. Because uh, if you refer some object with phantom reference, it, um, it is also put in reference queue. Uh, and uh, you should always use a reference queue to work with uh, objects that are phantom reference. Um, and uh, when the garbage collector um, finds some phantom reference in a in the reference queue, uh, it's marked it as it marked these objects for finalization, and um, they will be still in memory for some period in time. But uh, then they will be kind of clean up. Uh, in this. It means that using phantom references, you can uh, improve some finalization process. Or, or you can, for example, like if you have some uh, big object that is very hard to construct and you need to utilize it, you can uh, create some sort of functionality that will um, wait until you totally finalize this kind of big object before, um, before you create a new one like this. Uh, okay, let's move forward. Uh, the next one is benchmarking. Uh, we can measure and analyze the Java code's performance by executing benchmarks. This way we can compare the performance of alternative approaches to do the same task. And this can help us choose a better approach and may help us to conserve memory. Uh, I, I will not add here because it's kind of clear and kind of good statement. And of course, do not forget about code reviews. Uh, it's kind of classic old school way of doing a simple code walkthrough. And in some cases, even the trivial looking method can help in eliminating some common memory leaks problems. Uh, as I have mentioned several times, I created a list of some useful memory, oh, memory leaks, <laughs> sorry, uh, some useful links. Uh, you will, um, you can see them when this presentation will be available. Um, okay, kind of question section. Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, regarding the uh, static variables, how do, do you think it's uh, worth using static in uh, tests or does it make uh, to be impact control from print. Uh, everything I can say for sure is that if you need uh, to put some big, uh, some huge collection as a static, it's kind of a bad choice. You should uh, look some sort of uh, uh, cache providers. I don't know, for example, do our cache from Google or something like this, but do not put all the objects in kind of huge uh, collection. And we usually use static variables to keep some constant strings, but uh, does it make any impact uh, if the uh, strings if are stored in uh, the uh, string Not very big impact uh, because uh, all the strings are taken from the st string pool and I believe that it will not cause some huge impact if it's just a small kind of string strings in a static field. 
Mm. So basically, it doesn't matter if the string is defined as static or just. Yeah, the, the, uh, you will uh, you will receive a big problem if you want to collect uh, some uh, huge amount of object in a static collection. In such mm. case, you will receive some kind of memory leak. Ah, okay. Thank you. More questions? Okay, in such case, the last slide with great performance comes great memory responsibility. Spiderman rules. Okay, thanks for attention.